Oh, yeah? Of course not. You will. <laughs> seated here at this table. The casting process for The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis in 1959 was a careful selection of talents that brought the show to life. Casting director Bill Asher played a pivotal role in this process. For the character of Dobie Gillies, they wanted someone who could portray the perfect blend of charm, wit, and vulnerability. After a series of auditions, they found their Dobie in Dwayne Hickman. Hickman's ability to balance humor and heart won him the part. The role of Zelda, Dobie's romantic interest, was given to Tuesday Weld. Weld's audition demonstrated her ability to hold her own against Hickman, and her chemistry with him was undeniable. For the role of Dobie's best friend, Maynard G. Krebs, they needed someone who could embody the character's laid-back, beatnik personality. After seeing Bob Denver's audition, they knew they found their Maynard. Denver's unique comedic timing and physical comedy skills were a perfect fit for the role. The casting of Thalia Menninger, another of Dobie's romantic interests, was a bit more challenging. They needed someone who could match Wells' charisma and charm. After a series of audition and chemistry tests, they found their Thalia and Sheila James Kuehl. Kuehl's intelligence and wit shone through, making her the perfect choice. The final piece of the casting puzzle was the role of Dobie's father, Herbert T. Gillies. The character required an actor who could portray both humor and warmth. Frank Phelan, with his extensive experience in both film and television, was a natural fit for the role. Each actor brought their unique talents and skills to the table, creating a dynamic and engaging cast that would become the heart of the many loves of Dobie Gillies. I don't well, see sure, no but, uh, but what? I don't see no kettle neither. Uh, well, she's kind of different from other people. Different in what way, dear? The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis was directed by Rod Amatow, who brought a unique vision to the small screen. Amatow's approach was characterized by a focus on humor and a knack for finding the extraordinary and the ordinary. He was influenced by the fast-paced, witty style of classic Hollywood comedies and aimed to bring that energy to television. Amatow's directing style was marked by his ability to elicit naturals and engaging performances from his cast. He worked closely with the show's stars, including Dwayne Hickman and Bob Denver, to develop their characters and ensure that they were portrayed in a relatable and entertaining way. Amatow's collaborative approach also extended to the show's writers, producers, and crew members. He encouraged open communication and valued the input of everyone involved in the production. In terms of creative influences, Amatow was inspired by the works of classic comedians such as Charlie Chaplin and the Marx Brothers. He sought to bring a similar sense of whimsy and humor to the many loves of Dobie Gillies, while also addressing contemporary social issues in a thoughtful and nuanced way. One of Amatow's key contributions to the show was his ability to balance humor and drama, creating a tone that was both lighthearted and insightful. He achieved this through his use of visual comedy, clever dialogue, and a talented cast of characters that resonated with audiences. Overall, Rod Amatow's directorial vision for the many loves of Dobie Gillis was marked by his commitment to humor, collaboration, and social commentary. His approach helped to establish the show as a beloved classic and solidified his reputation as a talented and innovative director. Claire Maynard, let's get going. You wrote the question. All right, now, Arthur, uh, Thomas Chips. The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis was a popular TV series that aired from 1959 to 1963. It followed the life of Dobie Gillies, a high school student with a love for girls, played by Dwayne Hickman. The show also starred Bob Denver as Maynard G. Krebs, Dobie's beatnik friend. The series was known for its humor, and it tackled many issues that were relevant at the time. Throughout the series, Dobie had many loves, but his most memorable romantic interest was probably Zelda Gilroy played by Sheila James Kuehl. She was Dobie's intellectual equal and was always there to support him, even when he didn't deserve it. But there are many more fascinating facts about this show that you might not know. For instance, did you know that Bob Denver, who played Maynard G. Krebs, was almost replaced after the first season? Or that the show was based on a series of short stories by Mac Schulman? There are also some sad facts about the show. For example, Sheila James Kuehl, who played Zelda Gilroy, left the show after the third season due to contract disputes. And Dwayne Hickman, who played Dobie Gillies, struggled with alcoholism after the show ended. We would love to hear your stories and memories related to this TV series. What was your favorite role or episode?
Did you have a crush on any of the characters? Let us know in the comments below. Oh, Peppa. Skay Lord. At your service. The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, a 1959 TV series, was filmed primarily in Hollywood, California. The sets were designed to capture the essence of a small town American high school and the surrounding community. The show's main location, the fictional Central High School, was built on a soundstage at CBS Studio Center. Set design, the set design team, led by art director George W. Davis, meticulously crafted the show's various sets. They focused on creating realistic environments that reflected the late 1950s era, including a soda shop, a record store, and numerous classrooms. The team also paid close attention to the color palette, selecting hues that were popular during that time. Locations, while most of the series was shot on sound stages, the production occasionally ventured to exterior locations. These included parks, residential neighborhoods, and local businesses to provide greater visual variety and authenticity. Logistical challenges, one of the primary challenges faced during the production was coordinating the schedules of a large cast and crew. Additionally, the show's tight filming schedule required efficient set changes and careful planning to ensure that each episode was completed on time. Innovative techniques, The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis was one of the first TV series to employ the use of a live audience for selected scenes. This approach allowed the show's producers to gauge audience reactions and make adjustments accordingly. The series also made innovative use of split screens and other visual effects to enhance the storytelling. In summary, the production of The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis combined traditional set design with location shooting and cutting-edge techniques to create a memorable and engaging television series. The team's attention to detail and commitment to authenticity helped the show resonate with audiences and leave a lasting impact on television history. What do you think you'll be sorry for? The only thing I'm sorry for is that I've allowed myself to be hoodwinked by these two phonies. But if you're mistaken... The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis, a classic television series that aired from 1959 to 1963, focusing on the humorous trials and tribulations of a high school student named Dobie Gillies, played by Dwayne Hickman. The show is known for its clever writing, good comedic actors, and realistic portrayal of the generation gap between parents and teenagers in the late 1950s and early 1960s. Dobie is a likable but unmotivated teenager always in search of a pretty girl to be his girlfriend, often competing with Chatsworth Osborne Jr., a rich, spoiled, and party-time brat. Dobie's romantic interests often include Thalia Menninger, a girl with expensive tastes, and Zelda Gilroy, a smart, brainy, and unattractive girl who loves Dobie and is always outsmarting him. The series also features Dobie's parents, Herbert T. Gillis and Winnie Gillies, who are probably the most realistically portrayed TV parents from that era. Herbert is a hard-working but loud-mouthed man with a blustery personality, while Winnie is a nice and doting mother who lets Toby get away with not working in the family grocery store. The generation gap between father and son is portrayed with humorous results, as Herbert often declares his son a lazy bum who would wind up living off the county because he wouldn't work. The writing and editing of the show are also noteworthy, with a wit not found in other shows of that era, and great editing that sets up the next scene and instantly cuts to the next scene where a character responds in the exact opposite manner. The cast contains several well-portrayed eccentric characters, including Maynard G. Krebs, a beatnik character who loves jazz, and bebop, and shirts work. The best parts of the series are seasons one and the first half of two, before Dobie and Maynard are in the army. By season three, Dobie has matured and is taking mostly liberal arts courses, becoming an idealist, the show also began to focus more on Maynard and Herbert Gillies with silly and sometimes humorous and other times ridiculously over-the-top conflicts between these two. Despite some of the last season and the last half of the second, this show has a special charm that stands out from most of the others from that era. Some of the material is dated by today's standards, but overall, the show and the basic premise hold up quite well. Unfortunately, there are currently copyright issues preventing the entire series from being available on DVD. Sorry, Mrs. Gillis, that wasn't meant for your ears. Herbert, what is he talking about? Ooh, uh, yeah. The music in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis plays a crucial role in enhancing the show's narrative and emotional tone. The score, composed by a team led by Lionel Newman, features a variety of styles, from jazz to classical 
that perfectly complement the show's lighthearted and humorous tone. Newman and his team were known for their ability to create music that was both memorable and fitting for the scene. They used upbeat jazz melodies for the show's comedic moments and more romantic themes for the various love stories that Dobie Gillies, the show's protagonist, found himself in. The soundtrack also featured popular songs of the time, which helped to establish the show's setting in the late 1950s. These songs were often used to punctuate the end of an episode, providing a satisfying conclusion to the story. When creating the music for The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, Newman and his team drew inspiration from the show's characters and storylines. They understood that the music needed to serve the narrative, rather than simply being used as background noise. As a result, the score and soundtrack are tightly woven into the fabric of the show, helping to bring the characters and their stories to life. In creating the music for The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, Newman and his team made a significant contribution to the world of television music. Their work on the show helped to establish the importance of music in TV storytelling, and their innovative approach to scoring continues to influence composers today. Overall, the music in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies is a perfect example of how score and soundtrack can be used to enhance a show's narrative and emotional tone. Through their skillful use of a variety of musical styles and careful attention to the needs of the story, Newman and his team created a musical tapestry that continues to captivate audiences today. I'm the new owner of Kane Iron Steel. <laughs> I didn't tell you that. <laughs> In the late 1950s, the many loves of Dobie Gillis brought a unique approach to television by casting adult actors to portray teenagers. This decision allowed for the characters to serve as role models and for the show to continue filming without disrupting the schooling of real-life teenagers. Burt Mustin, one of the actors on the show, shared a humorous anecdote on Johnny Carson's Tonight Show. Mustin recounted a joke about two ice fishermen, where one fisherman was having success while the other was not. The successful fisherman shared his secret, leaving the other fisherman confused. After repeating the phrase, the successful fisherman spit out what appeared to be a wad of chew tobacco and clarified, you gotta keep your worms warm. Ron Howard, who played the role of Dobie Gillies, had a notable career in acting. Before his role in Dobie Gillies, Howard had played the same character in the film The Music Man and the title role in Huckleberry Finn, both of which were previously played by Eddie Hodges. Howard's ability to take on various roles throughout his career demonstrates his talent and versatility as an actor. Mr. Pomfret, I just decided the Pylon Sales Company can go jump in the lake. One of the most iconic scenes in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis from the episode Now You See It, where Dobie tries to impress a girl by performing magic tricks. The director, Rod Amatow, used close-ups to highlight Dobie's nervousness and the reactions of the crowd, creating a sense of intimacy and tension. Hickman's performance was both comedic and relatable, making the audience root for his character. The cinematography, with its crisp black and white visuals, added to the classic feel of the show. This scene had a significant impact on the audience as it showcased Dobie's vulnerability and the lengths he would go to win someone's affection. It also provided a glimpse into the show's theme of the struggles of teenage life and the pursuit of love. Hickman himself commented on the scene, stating, It was a great way to show Dobie's character he's not just a ladies' man, but someone who's trying to figure things out. This scene, along with others in the series, helped establish the many loves of Dobie Gillis's a groundbreaking show that tackled the complexities of teenage life with humor and heart. What people do, make mistakes. They make mistakes and pick themselves up, dust themselves off, and try again. It's only machine. Warren Beatty, known for his role in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, was honored as a commander of the French Order of Arts and Letters in 1992. In the series, Dobie often broke the fourth wall, speaking directly to the audience through monologues while seated in front of a replica of Rodden's The Thinker statue. This framing device was used to bookend episodes and facilitate scene transitions. Ron Howard, another notable cast member, received the National Medal of Arts from the National Endowment for the Arts in 23. His performance in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis contributed to his successful career in the entertainment industry. In summary, both Warren Beatty and Ron Howard, who starred in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, have received significant recognition for their contributions to the arts. The show's unique storytelling approach, featuring Dobie's direct addresses to the audience, set it apart from other series of the time. 
come along peacefully. Listen, my name is Herbert T. Gillis. I got nothing to do with this cleaning shop. I own a grocery store at 9th and Main. Uh, the Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, a 1959 TV series, made a significant cultural and social impact. It resonated with audiences due to its fresh and humorous take on teenage life, love, and social status. The show introduced relatable characters, such as the charming, naive Dobie Gillis and his philosophical friend Maynard G. Krebs, who embodied the beatnik culture of the time. Dobie Gillis influenced pop culture by popularizing the teenage sitcom genre and inspiring future shows like The Beverly Hillbillies and Gilligan's Island. The series also contributed to discussions on relevant social themes, such as the generation gap, social class, and the emerging youth culture. The show's impact extended to fashion, with Maynard G. Krebs' slouchy beanie and goatee becoming a symbol of the beatnik movement. Additionally, Dobie Gillis was one of the first TV series to address the role of women in society, albeit subtly, by featuring intelligent and independent female characters. The many loves of Dobie Gillis remains relevant today as its themes and characters continue to inspire and entertain new audiences. The show's enduring appeal is a testament to its ability to connect with people across generations and cultures. Your next opponent is number one, Rocky Ferroni. Me, he don't scare. He's sitting right over there. Warren Beatty, known for his role in the many loves of Dobie Gillies, has maintained friendships with notable political figures such as John McCain and Nancy Reagan, as well as Ronald Reagan, who invited him to screen his film Reds at the White House during his presidency. William Shallard, another cast member, had a successful career in voiceover work, including being the longtime voice of Oscar Mayer in TV commercials and serving as a proficient voiceover announcer for several other products. Lastly, Joyce Van Patten, who also appeared in the series, is the half-sister of Timothy Van Patten, another accomplished actor in the industry. Expense. True? Uh, true, sir. No but... more true, sir, but. <laughs> One action. I want to see this animal perform. The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, a 1959 TV series, received positive critical reception and had a significant impact on the television industry. The show, which starred Dwayne Hickman as the titular character, was praised for its innovative and humorous take on the teenage experience. Notable reviews came from publications such as the New York Times, which described the show as a bright and breezy comedy with a fresh and engaging cast. The Hollywood Reporter also had positive things to say, calling the series a delightful and witty look at the world of teenagers and highlighting the charming performances of the lead actors. Audience reactions were also overwhelmingly positive, with the show quickly becoming a hit among young viewers. The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis was one of the first TV series to focus on the lives and relationships of teenagers, and its success helped pave the way for future shows in the genre. The series received several award nominations, including two Emmy nominations for Outstanding Comedy Series in 1960 and 1961. The show's stars, Dwayne Hickman and Tuesday Weld, were also nominated for Emmys for their performances. These accolades were significant for those involved in the show, as they helped establish the many loves of Dobie Gillis as a groundbreaking and influential series. The nomination and positive reviews also helped to boost the careers of the show's cast, and crew, many of whom went on to have successful careers in the entertainment industry. In addition to its impact on the television industry, the many loves of Dobie Gillis also had a lasting impact on popular culture. The show's memorable characters and catchy theme song have become enduring symbols of the 1950s and 1960s, and the series continues to be celebrated for its wit, charm, and innovative approach to storytelling. Mr. Krebs, if memory serves, this is a class in history. And if history teaches us one thing, it is that... Dwayne Hickman, known for his role in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, passed away on a significant day, what would have been his co-star Bob Denver's 87th birthday. Meanwhile, Tuesday Wilt, another actress from the series, gained recognition when she was featured on the cover of Matthew Sweet's album Girlfriend in 1991. Warren Beatty, who also starred in the series, made headlines when he turned down the role of Jack Horner in Boogie Nights. He later expressed regret for his decision, as Burt Reynolds, who took on the role, received an Academy Award nomination for his performance. Ironically, Reynolds did not enjoy working on the film, a fact that has been well documented. Mr. in Cleveland for another week. Huh? What? Oh, she was worried about you too, but when I... The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis was a groundbreaking TV series that aired from 1959 to 1963. 
The show, which followed the romantic pursuits of the titular character, Dobie Gillies, was known for its witty dialogue and memorable characters. Behind the scene, the cast and crew faced many challenges and shared many memorable moments. For instance, Dwayne Hickman, who played Dobie Gillies, was once nearly fired from the show. Hickman had been struggling with his lines, and the show's producers were growing frustrated. However, Hickman's co-star, Bob Denver, intervened on his behalf, convincing the producers to give Hickman another chance. Denver himself faced his own set of challenges while filming the show. Denver, who played the lovable but slow-witted Maynard G. Krebs, had never acted before appearing on Dobie Gillies. In fact, Denver had been working as a mailman before being cast on the show. Despite his lack of experience, Denver quickly became a fan favorite, thanks in large part to his comedic timing and unique delivery. The show's writers also faced their own set of challenges. The writers were tasked with coming up with new and inventive ways to keep the show fresh and engaging, which was no easy feat given the show's premise. To accomplish this, the writers often drew inspiration from their own lives and experiences. For instance, the character of Zelda, played by Sheila James Kuehl, was based on a real-life woman that one of the show's writers had dated. Despite the challenges, the cast and crew of Dobie Gillis remained close-knit throughout the show's four-season run. The friendships and bonds formed on set lasted long after the show went off the air, with many of the cast and crew members remaining in touch to this day. In the end, The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis remains a beloved and enduring classic, thanks in large part to the hard work and dedication of its talented cast and crew. Gotta make 300 sandwiches. 300? 300 of them already here and you're like feeding them? <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you, gotta, you gotta do Warren Beatty, known for his role in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, has an interesting family background. His mother, Kathleen Corrine, was a drama teacher from Nova Scotia, Canada, while his father, Era Owens Beatty, was a PhD of educational psychology, public school administrator, and real estate dealer from Virginia. Beatty once claimed that he was offered the lead role in Rocky, a film released in 1976. Actor Charles Lane, who also appeared in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, had a small role in the Donna Reed show during its second season. The episode, titled All Mothers Worry, was released on November 15, 1959, but Lane was not credited in the show's credits. Despite this, Lane's appearance in the show is noteworthy as he had a long and successful career in the entertainment industry. Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, I was young and it was springtime. The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, a 1959 television series, holds a significant place in film history due to its innovative approach to situational comedy and relatable characters. The show explored the romantic pursuits and everyday challenges of its protagonist, Dobie Gillies, a typical American teenager. Its fresh and contemporary take on the genre proved influential for future filmmakers, inspiring the creation of various TV shows and movies that delved into the complexities of adolescent life with humor and sensitivity. One of the most notable impacts of the many loves of Dobie Gillis was the introduction of the character Maynard G. Krebs, played by Bob Denver. Maynard, a beatnik and best friend to Dobie, brought counterculture and nonconformity to mainstream television. This groundbreaking portrayal paved the way for future anti-establishment characters in film and television, inspiring writers and directors to incorporate diverse personalities and subcultures into their stories. The series also served as a stepping stone for several accomplished actors, including Tuesday Weld, Warren Beatty, and Dwayne Hickman, who portrayed Dobie Gillies. These actors went on to have successful careers in film and television, contributing to the entertainment industry in various ways. Moreover, the many loves of Dobie Gillishes inspired numerous adaptations and spin-offs. For instance, the popular 1990s television show Dream On was inspired by Dobie Gillies, as both series featured a central character reminiscing about past romantic encounters. The iconic sitcom Friends also borrowed elements from Dobie Gillies, as the character Joey Tribbany shared similarities with Dobie in terms of his romantic pursuits and comedic timing. In summary, The Many Loves of Dobie Gillish has left an indelible mark on film history through its innovative storytelling, introduction of counterculture characters, and inspiration for future filmmakers and actors. Its enduring legacy continues to resonate in contemporary television and film, demonstrating the show's lasting influence and importance. Of course I paid for it, with the last penny of the oatmeal and peanut butter fund. Warren Beatty, 
known for his role in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, had a significant relationship with Julie Christie. They met in 1966 and began a long romance, despite maintaining separate households. Beatty, who considered Christie his wife, proposed to her, but she declined as she didn't want children. Their relationship ended in 1974 when Christie realized their future goals were incompatible. Jack Albertson, another cast member, was the younger brother of Mabel Albertson. The show's establishing shots of Dobie's high school were filmed at the old Los Angeles High School on 4650 Olympic Boulevard, which was demolished after damage from the 1971 Silmar earthquake and a suspicious fire. Well, Maynard is getting himself into. I know, but you don't. Well, I know one thing. Any time a doll like that... Warren Beatty, known for his role in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, is not just an actor, but also a film director. He, along with Robert Redford, Clint Eastwood, Mel Gibson, Richard Attenborough, and Kevin Costner, is one of six people to win an Academy Award for Best Director. Beatty is also the godfather of Stephen Bauer and Melanie Griffith's son, Alexander. Yvonne Craig, who also starred in the series, became very upset when she found out that Barbara Gordon, the character she played on the Batman television series, was going to become a paraplegic after getting shot by the Joker in the graphic novel, The Killing Joke. In fact, she wrote a letter to DC Comics expressing her displeasure with the direction the company took with the character. Right in the head. No offense, Seymour. I mean, lovableness is more important than intelligence, and you're the most lovable. The television series, The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, featured several notable actors who have continued to leave their mark in the industry and beyond. Following the death of Dwayne Hickman, three cast members remain alive Daryl Hickman, Tuesday Weld, and Sheila Kuehl. Warren Beatty, who played a minor role in the show, is of English, Scottish, and distant Irish descent. His father was American, while his mother was Canadian. Beatty and his family have a rich history, with his sister, Shirley MacLaine, also being a renowned actress. Another cast member, Yvonne Craig, was known for her love of travel. She and her husband, Kenneth Aldrich, have journeyed to the farthest corners of the earth. Craig's adventurous spirit and love for exploration have left a lasting impact on those who knew her. In summary, the cast of the many loves of Dobie Gillis was made up of talented and adventurous individuals who have continued to make their mark in various ways. Dobie, but I can't find it in my heart to be too hard on you. Well, me neither, son. Yvonne Craig, known for her role in the many loves of Dobie Gillis, revealed that she had not seen Batman before being cast in it. Her co-star, Warren Beatty, negotiated a lucrative deal for Bonnie and Clyde, securing 40% of the box office gross for the film. This decision proved to be financially rewarding for Beatty, as the film generated over 70 million worldwide between 1967 and 73. After her time on the show, Sheila James Kuehl pursued higher education and graduated from Harvard Law School. In the fourth season of The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, Bob Denver was drafted, leading to the introduction of Michael J. Pollard as Maynard's cousin Jerome Krebs. However, Denver's rejection by the draft board resulted in his return to the series, and Pollard was paid for all 30 episodes he had been signed for upon his dismissal. Prior to her role in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, Joyce Van Patten had auditioned for the role of Bonnie Blue Butler in Gone with the Wind as a Child. In the episode What's My Lion? Zamba, a lion that would later appear in Gilligan's Island, made its first appearance alongside Bob Denver. You know, this night goes tricky stuff. Sometimes you couldn't... Yvonne Craig, known for her role in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillies, found reunions for Batman to be a chance to socialize with cast members, as the filming schedule of weekly series often left little time for bonding. Warren Beatty, who played a minor role in Dobie Gillies, was notorious for his numerous romantic connections in his prime, including high-profile actresses and models. However, in 1991, he was dropped by sultry supermodel Stephanie Seymour for Axl Rose, leading him to settle down with Annette Bening. Frank Phelan, who played TV dad Herbert T. Gillies, is best remembered for his role in Dobie Gillies. Getting a revolver. Huh? At your service, senor. <laughs> Did you enjoy The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis from 1959? We'd love to hear about your experiences and memories related to this classic TV series. How did it impact you personally or influence your perspective on cinema? 
By sharing your stories, you can help create a vibrant community of cinema enthusiasts. Whether you were touched by the show's humor, the characters, or the timeless themes, your insights could inspire others to explore this beloved series. So, don't be shy. We encourage you to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Let's start a conversation and celebrate the enduring legacy of the many loves of Dobie gillis But the way you can sell, I better get out of here before you convince me. I